بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الحبة في الله continue on in our discussion around the issue of ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with ikhlas with the bad and bless us to be of benefit in clearing up some of the shubahat that is widespread. In the second part of this topic, after we discuss in general the hukum of ruling by what other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and that sometimes it can be the major kufr that can take one out of the fold of Islam and sometimes it can be kufr dunu kufr as some of the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum majma'in and the mufassireen explained from the tabi'een rahimahumullah jami'an and the seriousness of takfir which is the next issue at hand because after discussing the ruling regarding ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, it is munasib that we discuss the issue of takfir and the state of the leaders, the state of leadership that rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the Salaf. The Prophet wasallam said regarding the seriousness of making takfir without the right to do so. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is what distinguishes Ahlul Sunnah from the Hizbiyun, from amongst the takfiris and amongst the Khwana Muslimin and the other groups and sects and the original sect, the Khwarij. This is what, one of the things that distinguishes them is they make takfir without the duwabit and the criterion and the conditions for making takfir and without looking at the mu'an, those prohibitors to making takfir. Whereas Ahl sunnah looks at all of those matters and the ulama of Ahl sunnah are the ones to make those calls and the judges amongst the Muslims. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم من رمى مؤمن بكفر فهو كقتله. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the, uh, whoever claims that a believer is a disbeliever, it is as if he killed him. قال الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية ولا ينبغي أن يظن أن تكفير ونفيه ينبغي أن يدرك قطع في كل مقام بل تكفير حكم شرعي يرجى إلى الإباحة المال وصفق الدماء وحكم بخلود في النار فمخذه كمخذ كمخذ سائر الأحكام الشرعية فتار يدرك بيقين وتارة يدرك بظن الغالب وتارة يتردد فيه ومهما حصل تردد فتوقف عن تكفير أولى ومبادر ومبادرة إلى تكفير إنما تغلب على تباع من يغلب عليهم الجهل شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية said رحمة الله عليه with regards to making the ruling of takfir and as a warning to be not be hasty in making this ruling, he said that <clears throat> it is not permissible uh, to make this ruling of takfir, uh, you know, quickly, and that negating it is essential if it is not. Uh, if this ruling has not been come about without without full surety, without any doubt within it. And he says that the ruling of takfir, this is a sharia ruling. And what is related to it is 
the making permissible of, of a person's wealth and the spilling of blood and the ruling that someone would dwell in the hellfire forever. And this, as with all other uh, 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 rulings of the Sharia, that sometimes it can be this this ruling this this ruling can be brought about with certainty and sometimes by the overwhelming uh the overwhelming ghalabat al that this is something which is more than likely the case and sometimes it is a ruling which is a person yataraddidu fihi meaning that sometimes you're, you're not sure, that the judge is not sure regarding making this pronouncement of takfir. And as long as there is this ambiguity regarding uh, the, this ruling, then he said, then it takes precedence stopping from, uh, refraining from making takfir. And then he says, and rushing to make takfir that this follows that uh, to, to, to rush to make takfir, this is something that illustrates more than likely that this person is ignorant. So letting us know that this is a dangerous hukum and it should not be done out of haste and it should be left to the people of al wa fiqh the ulama al-deen. Qala ibn Arabi, rahimullah ta'ala, inna al-hukma bima indahu ala annahu min indillah huwa tibdeel lahu yujib al-kufr. So here now, ahabatifillah, the issue about ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed has been addressed directly. And ibn Arabi, he said, rahimullah ta'ala, this is not the ibn Arabi of the uh, Ahla Tasawwuf that was known from the Sufiya and those extremists, uh, those who uh, their beliefs led them to believe that Allah is one with the creation or that the creation itself is Allah and all of these other uh, forms of ilhad. But this Ibn Arabi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he states, he says that the ruling, that when the leader he rules from himself making making a ruling himself and he claims that it is from Allah that this is tabdil this is this this statement of tabdil because we're going to talk about tabdil wa istibla wa istibdal and this is the issue of tabdil and this necessitates kufr meaning that if someone's claims that what they're ruling by is from Allah's law and it is not from Allah's law then this is tabdil, this is kufr. This takes you out of the fold of Islam. As for istibdal, istibdal, فَهُوَ أَنَّ الْحَنْ يَحْكَمْ بِغَيْرِ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ وَلَا يُكُونْ مُسْتَحِلًّا وَلَا جَاهِدٍ وَلَا مُكَذِّبٍ وَلَا مُفَضِّلٍ وَلَا مُسَوِّيًّ وَلَا يَنْسِبَ الْحُكْمَ الَّذِي جَاءَ بِهِ لِلْدِينِ اللَّهِ وَهُكُمْ هَذِهِ سورة. This is imperative to understand this. So this is the difference between, uh, as we mentioned before, a tabdil is when you believe that what you're ruling by, and it's not from the Sharia, but you believe that it is from, you uh, say that this is Allah's law. But istibdal is when a person rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealed, but they do not make it lawful. They do not make what they're doing, they do not declare that this is lawful what they're doing. Or they do not believe that what they are ruling by is, uh, is lawful to rule by. Nor do they 
arrogantly refuse the Sharia? Do they re nor do they reject the Sharia? Nor do they uh, lie in their claim that this is uh, from Allah's deen or like this. Nor do they, are they mufaddalin. Nor do they make their law, take their law in preference to the Sharia, saying that their law is better than the Sharia. Nor do they say that their law is equal to the Sharia. All of that would, would take a person out of the fold of Islam. And they do not declare or associate their rule with what came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion, then this person who's ruling by other than what Allah revealed in this situation, then they are making istibdal. But they are not making tabdil. Tabdil takes you out of the fold of Islam and this is to say that this is from the religion of Allah when you're not ruling by Allah's law. And istibdal follows uh, those criteria that we mentioned that they are not ruling, making, believing that what they are ruling by is permissible to, to exclude from the Sharia or at the expense of the Sharia, nor are they negating the Sharia, negating the, the fact that they have to rule by Allah's law, nor are they ruling out of lying and, and deception with regards to the Sharia, nor are they claiming that what they are ruling by is better than the Sharia or equal to the Sharia. So that would be istibdal. Nor do they associate what they rule by as a part of the Sharia. And that, the hukum regarding this, if, for those who rule in this manner, is that this is a type of ma'asi, a type of the major sin, a major sinfulness. And it is the minor disbelief which does not expel a person from Islam. قال ibn Abdul Barr rahimullah ta'ala وأجمع العلماء على أن الجور في الحكم من الكبائر لمن تعمد ذلك عالم به. Ibn Abdul Barr, he said, rahmatullahi he said that the scholars have consensus that the one who makes this rule or rules with oppression that this is a major sin as long as he does not make that, uh, uh, he does not have the intention to do this rule and have knowledge of this, of, of what he's doing, that it's ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, meaning that he has intention to rule by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and that he, uh, that it, it meets those other criteria that we already mentioned. So what's imperative is to know that the difference between tabdil wa istibdal, it is, is uh, tabdil, it is when you associate the ruling that you are ruling by, which is other than what Allah revealed, as what Allah revealed, as from the Sharia. And that this takes a person out of the fold of Islam. But if a person rules by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, but he doesn't associate that with the Sharia and doesn't say it's equal to and doesn't say it's better than and doesn't negate the Sharia saying the Sharia is not beneficial in this time or whatever the situation may be, then this person has committed a major sin, but it is the minor kufr, and it does not expel them out of the fold of Islam. And with regards to that, there, uh, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, will insan metta halal al-haram المجمع عليه أو حرم الحلال المجمع عليه أو بدل الشرع المجمع عليه كان كافرا مرتدا باتفاق فقهاء. شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية said that the person that makes استحلال that he makes what is 
uh, lawful, unlawful, and it is something which is agreed upon by the uh, uh, the 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 fuqaha of the Muslims. You know, the scholars of the Muslims. Or they make what is unlawful, lawful, and this is something which is has consensus upon it, meaning there's no difference of a of opinion with regards to it, and we're not talking about a shad opinion. Or they change the uh, ruling of a law which is uh, agreed upon by consensus. Then this person is a disbeliever who was apostated according to the uh, consensus of the fuqaha, of the scholars of fiqh. And this is absolutely imperative to understand these issues so as not to make general rulings as we see those takfiris do with regards to this issue, which is a highly uh, sensitive issue. Some of the statements of some of the modern day scholars like Sheikh bin Uthameen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, some of the more contemporary scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, and what's beautiful is that this is the next stage or the next aspect of this topic. And that is when a person does this rule, what if they do do the major kufr which takes them out of the fold of Islam? Does that mean that they're out of the fold of Islam? And this goes to the issue of takfir al-ma'ayin and takfir al-mutlaq. Meaning that if someone, a takfir is divided into two types. Takfir al-ma'ayin, which means... Uh, that you are making takfir on a specific individual. Someone has fit the criterion and the duwab to takfir and the shuru to takfir and there's no mu'ana for them, meaning there's no excuse for their ignorance and no excuse for ta'wil or what have you. And this particular individual has been judged to have apostated from Islam. This is called takfir al-ma'ayin. For example, the takfir of Sheikh bin Baz of uh, Saddam Hussein. Or the Sheikh, uh, the Takfir of Sheikh Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Rahimahumullah Jami'an, uh, of Saddam Hussein. That they both made Takfir of Saddam Hussein. Then when they declared that that was Takfir of Saddam Hussein, Hussein himself, then that is Takfir al Ma'ayan, meaning that they have made this ruling based on those criterion for Takfir. The other type of Takfir is Takfir. Al-Mutlaq, meaning the general takfir, meaning when you say that whoever doesn't rule by whatever Allah, what Allah has revealed, that they are disbelievers. That that and and we mentioned some of those examples of istibdal or tabdil. And so, if a particular ruler falls into this tabdil, where they have left the fold of Islam, then. In order to make takfir, of course you have to look at those conditions, those the mu'an of takfir and the shuru to takfir, before you make takfir al-ma'ayin. And if a person of knowledge from the ulama that are grounded in this bab makes this pronouncement according to those, or the Islamic qadi, the judge, or what have you, makes this ruling, then it's based upon those things. Now, the next issue that arises is this beautiful issue. And this is a statement of Shaykh al-Albani, and I think we'll leave off there because the Adhan has been called, and we'll continue this in the next sitting about this issue, and hopefully we'll be able to wrap it up then. But this will end on this statement of Imam al-Albani, rahmatullah because this sums it up perfectly. And this is also taken from a statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and those who preceded him. Qala Imam al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, ليس كل من وقع في الكفر من المؤمنين وقع الكفر عليه وأحاط به. Beautiful statement, and we'll stop there. Imam Al Albani, rahmatullah alayhi, said, "Not everyone who falls into disbelief from amongst the believers has become a disbeliever." That's basically what that statement means. Letting us know, as Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah has said, that, that everyone 
it, basically, it doesn't necessitate everyone who falls into disbelief as being a disbeliever. So that if someone, even though they did an, an issue that takes them out of the fold of Islam, for example, someone makes a statement of shirk al-akbar. They say Jesus is a son of God, for example. Wa'iyadu billah bin dalika. Okay, this example we can t t apply to what I said. I just said that Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, was the son of God. Wa'iyadu billah bin dalika. And I'm free from that. But since I gave you that as an example, I'm giving you that to show you that someone said it, but it just came off my tongue. Does that, that statement is a statement that takes a person out of Islam. A, a Muslim does not say that statement. I'm illustrating this statement to show that some people say this statement. It came off my tongue. Does that mean I've left the fold of Islam? No. I'm using it to illustrate for you that this uh, is disbelief. Likewise, someone could say this. Maybe they're in a lecture and they say this statement and they say it out of a mistake, they're quoting a hadith and they misquote it and they say this statement. This does not take them out of the, out of the fold of Islam because one of the mu'an of takfir is in place, meaning they didn't say it with the intention to make kufr and they didn't and they said it mukhtiyan, they said it out of error. They said it as a mistake and this goes back to our first lecture on this series when uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyum mentioned that every, uh, not everyone, a person who makes a mistake out of saying something with disbelief is a disbeliever. And so I hope that this is clear and we'll expound upon that in the next sitting. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.